The Tesla Cybertruck, one of the most iconic electric vehicles of our time. And in the future, it's known for its unique details and of course, halo aesthetics that brought everybody into it to begin with. Unfortunately, I forgot about it coming out in this time period and I didn't put my pre-order in, but I begged to ask the question, is it better to buy one or build one? Hey everyone, and welcome to Groove Builders, the show where we create together. I'm your host, is Swordly Cone, and in this episode, we're going to be building the Tesla Cybertruck from Chopin. And we've built a couple of builds from this brand here, and so far they've been quite good, even though the packages look a little uh, floppy and beaten up. But packaging aside, we have to ask ourselves a few questions, like, how well designed is this model? What tools are we going to need? And will it actually roll? These are all great questions. We're going to get the answers. Let's get down to the workbench and uh, open up our package. And just like that, we begin building our Cybertruck. And the first thing you might realize is I'm not wearing any gloves. And that's because I want to try something a little bit different. Yes, typically I wear gloves, and that's not only to protect the metal from my fingerprints, but because my hands get a little bit beaten up when I uh, do construction throughout the day to be able to fund this whole time machine experience. Uh, but they can be a little bit unsettling on screen. So I wanted to see if this looks better. Let me know in the comments down below how you like it here. But before we get too far into this build, we should really talk about the tools that you're gonna to need to be able to build it. Starting off with our nippers. These are great for cutting out all of our pieces. And as long as they have a really nice kind of triangular bit here on the front, they should be good for cutting out the majority of them. The key thing to remember is to take our little nippers here and go right up to the edge of our part before cutting. This way, we don't leave any metal on the part from the part sheet. If you do have a piece of metal left over, this is called a burr, and they can get in the way of us putting all of our pieces together. So take your nippers again, just give them another little cut and try to make it as small as possible, and you should be good to go. The next tool I'm going to recommend is a good pair of pliers. These ones here are from Metal Time Workshop, and I absolutely love them because they're super skinny. They don't have any ribs on the inside here, so they don't mark up our pieces, but they have a ton of control. They're great, they're tiny, and they can secure not only all of our tabs, but bend all of our pieces in the proper way. For a truck like this, I think these are perfect. But if you don't have a small pair like this, you can also use the classic tweezers. These can be just as good for shaping all of our pieces, but I personally prefer these ones just for the control. And finally, the last tool I'm going to recommend is a dapping punch. These are great for our tires. And while yes, you can do them with pliers, using a dapping punch makes everything nice and uniform. All you need to do is just put the part onto your mouse pad and give it a nice little up and down motion with some pressure. This will allow the part to be able to form around the tool, creating a perfect cylindrical piece. You'll be able to see that a little bit later on in the build here, but for right now, the dapping punch is king for making any of our cylindrical details. All right, Groovers, let's get into the build. Yes, I am back quickly, and that's because step two here can be a little bit tricky when it comes to putting these side details on. It's a really important thing to remember that we need to keep all of our pieces separated, and although they might look the same, the angles on them matter. If your parts do get mixed up, I would recommend taking a look at your instructions and matching them up to them to figure out which ones go where. Once you do, take a quick little look at the instructions again to make sure you're installing these parts on the proper way, rather that be color up 
or color down. Unfortunately, in this build, they really don't tell us when we need to put the colors up or down. So we need to make sure that when we're installing the part, we are following that picture to the T. And by that picture, I mean this one up here. It's super important when following the instructions that we take a second look at the picture to ensure we're putting everything in the right place. They are in color, which makes it a lot easier for us. But again, some kind of indicator would have been nice. our first bumper so far with this one it's important to remember we want to keep it open at the end here you'll see that i actually close mine up and secure the tabs not a good idea the next few steps we're going to need that open to be able to attach everything together so right now leave those little wings on the side open you're going to need it
Oh, step eight. Now this part might look familiar and that's because almost every 3D metal model car has this piece built into it. And it's usually quite difficult. Not the case here. With a Cybertruck, because it's so big, it's actually quite easy to put together. All the tabs go into the right place. And as long as we keep everything kind of open, it will attach onto our car quite easily, just like that. And for our next step, the only part here in step nine that gets a little bit tricky is just trying to ensure what side of the part needs to be exposed. And you'll actually see me struggle here for a moment. Oh, isn't that cute? But I eventually figure out that it's supposed to be the black side up. So just make sure, or I should say the black side facing towards you, the down piece here. This is gonna be the wheel details on the inside. So ensure that when you're placing these into place, you put them in not only in the right spot, but also in the right orientation. Otherwise you might have some pretty shiny wheel wells. <laughs> Oh boy, step 11. Now it's my fault here that we didn't actually have more footage of this step. And that's because while I was recording, I actually ran out of space on my card, didn't realize it, and I was just kind of trucking through this piece. Now, overall, it's not difficult. All you do is line up all the tabs together and then slowly connect them from the back to the front. Trying to attach our wheel areas is a little bit tricky because you gotta reach into the mall to get those ones. But overall, it goes together again quite easily. I just wish I would have had more footage of it. Silly me. Okay, step 14, we're into our axles. Now it's kind of important here that we make these axles as tight as possible while allowing them to be connected into the wheel well. I used both my dapping set as well as my uh, bending tool there to be able to help me get the proper shape. And I would highly recommend you using something similar to these to be able to get that done. An alternative to these tools would be a good drill set. They have a lot of little tiny guys there that would be perfect for these axles. But what we need to do is make sure that it's perfectly cylindrical. And that's because once we put those on the bottom of our Cybertruck, they're gonna to need to be able to spin freely inside of some metal uh, brackets. And as you know, metal on metal can be a little bit tricky. So we need to make sure not only all our tabs are really nice and tight, but that our pieces are nice and small too. Yes, it's a little bit complicated, but nothing that we haven't done before.
and boom, there we have it. The Shupin Cybertruck in all of its glory. This build was quite fun to put together and easy too, although the paint job leaves a little bit to be desired, not just because it says SpaceX on it, which is a completely different company, but because it's a fingerprint magnet. Yes, it's uh, quite the magnet for fingerprints actually. But outside of that, it's quite the enjoyable build. Yes, there are some difficult details like our bumpers and wheel details, which exist on other 3D metal model cars. But with this one being the size that it is, I found it just so much easier to put them all together. And it kind of makes me want to see other 3D metal model cars come out in this size too. I think the experience would be a lot more fun. And I have to say that the metal here on the ship in Cybertruck really did hold up as well. I was expecting this to be one or two bend metal, but after kind of messing up some of my pieces and having to bend them the opposite way, I can surely say that this is well above one to two bends. It's definitely on par or very similar to Metal Earth's older style of metal. Not their newer stuff, but their older stuff. And because of that, I can highly recommend this not just for beginners, but also for experienced builders out there. Now, let's see if this thing uh, rolls on my table. Uh, yeah, you know what? It does, although the uh, front tire here appears to be getting a little bit stuck. And that might be because of this one tab here that's sticking out. Yeah, let's see. A little bit better. I'm going to have to work on it, but it does roll. You just have to make sure that your axles are really tight. And again, that you make sure that all these little uh, tabs here are pushed in all the way. And if you do that, you should have no problem getting a nice little roll just like that. All right, Groovers, that brings us to the end of our episode. I had a really good time building this Cybertruck with you, and if you guys had a good time, don't forget to press that like button. For more videos like this, hit subscribe as well. We've got all kinds of cool content coming out in the future, and I would love to have you there. Until next time, keep building. All right, now it's time to go race this thing.